This is Le Mans, ancient city of France, home of the most famous motor race, the 24-hour race. Devised by French sportsmen 30 years ago, this great test of endurance enthralled the world. Drivers soon came from beyond the borders of France to join the midsummer madness at Le Mans, to race without respite round the clock, from the broiling sun into the darkness and through the chill night into the dawn of a new day. Sometimes the strain was too great for men and machines, but the strongest survived, and each year cars have travelled faster and farther than before. Great names are linked with Le Mans. Bentley of Britain, Mercedes of Germany, Delahaye of France, Alfa Romeo of Italy. Their names are legion, each upholding their country's prestige as Le Mans became an affair of national honour. And in recent years, a new name has been added to the role of victory, Jaguar. So to Le Mans for the 21st time. From all over the world, tens of thousands of people have made the pilgrimage to see the Grand Prix d'Endurance come of age. And all but two of them seem to be milling around the cars. Somehow our Jaguars have reached their marks intact. The three team cars and number 20 from Belgium stand halfway down the line. Our Aston Martin friends take station on our left while the formidable Ferraris join the Alphas on our right. Higher up the hill are the American Cunninghams, our other great rivals. In this lull before the storm, drivers relax, if they can. Ahead lies 24 hours of nervous tension and needlepoint concentration. For the next few minutes, there are others to do the worrying, and there's plenty to worry about. As time ticks by, we become acutely conscious of the thousand fallible parts of a car, of the hundred thousand moments when they can fail. Only a few minutes to go now. And here come reinforcements to help clear the track. Well, this is it. Time to wrap it up. Drivers are getting their marching orders and listening to last words of advice based on strategy worked out months before. They gird themselves for the fray. The cars stand ready. Cunningham, Allard, Lancia, Talbo, Nash Healy, Ferrari and Alfa Romeo all lie ahead of us. Suddenly the crowd is hushed. The flag is up. Drivers on their marks. Sterling Moss wins a sprint and he's away. Just watch him weaving his way through Alphas and Ferraris. The Le Mans start. What a fantastic sight. And here they come, a Cunningham in the lead, the whole pack snarling at his wheels. British green, French blue and the scarlet of Italy blending into a haze of dust through which plunge the smaller pride, Porsches, Renault and a popularity of Panard. Tensely the clouds strain their eyes down the straight. And it's Allard, a Ferrari, a Jaguar, Moss I think. Then Alancia, a Cunningham, Tom Cole, Tony Rose, and Mike Hawthorne's Ferrari. Already the lap record is threatened. Second time round, Villarese leads, with Moss right on his tail. Then a Ferrari, a Jaguar, and the now ailing Allard, followed by the field. passes Villarese, so it's Jaguar, Ferrari, Ferrari, Jaguar, England versus Italy. And then as the leaders lap the smaller cars, number 18, Tony Rose Jaguar, breaks the lap record and flashes past us into third place. Already the field is spreading out round the circuit, for the leaders are averaging 106 miles an hour. And out on the straight, a Cunningham has clocked 154. But the killing pace is taking its toll. Cars already visiting the pits. Veyron's brakes are fading. Poor Allards have gone. Hawthorne is out. Then in the second hour, Moss, the leader, is in trouble. 
It's only a choked filter, but before we get him away, he's dropped halfway down the field. So now Villarese is first, but not for long. Rope soon edges number 18 into the lead. And with Whitehead in number 19, fourth, once again the scoreboard reads, Jaguar, Ferrari, Ferrari, Jaguar. As evening falls, cars begin to come into their pits for more fuel and to change crew for the long night drive. And in the Fraser Nash pits nearby, Mitchell hands over to Ken Wharton. Clark brings in Gerard's grand old Fraser Nash. Rob is one of the few private owners at Lamont, and he gets a hand from the crowd. And there's Rice, last year's winner. He takes over the Alpha, now second to the leading Jaguar. And as the last glimmer of day fades in the sky, the crowd, still packing the tribunes, watch Jaguars, Alphas, Ferraris and Cunninghams leading the field into the gathering dark. Came the dawn, to coin a phrase, and Moss comes in while the shadows are still long. By fine driving through the night in the foggy, foggy dew, he and Peter Walker have won their way back among the leaders. And now a quick refuel. A little tinkering, a drink of oil and a wheel change. and then down with a bonnet, and Walker takes off again. No time to hang around with a Ferrari and a Cunningham still ahead. The long night had demanded much from men and machines, and many had failed to stay the course. But at breakfast time, Jaguar number 18 was still firmly in the lead. At this crucial point then, Jaguars are first, third, fifth and tenth, Ferraris second and sixth, and Cunningham's fourth, eighth and twelfth, followed by many other cars battling for class honours or victory on handicap. Angela Hamilton and Lois Rowe cook us a fine breakfast, and while we knock back Gerzo Fopla, we talk about the fantastic race average. 106 miles an hour, 10% faster than last year, and some who have been here before begin to wonder, can it last? And keep their fingers crossed. And here's the Coupe Fraser Nash coming in. Even this two litre is motoring fast enough to have won the race three years ago. The fuel hose in and Wharton out. And then the hose out and Mitchell in. The Flambeur puts his official seal on the tank, and then Mitchell, driving with clockwork precision in this, his first Le Mans, is off again. In the 18th hour, Walker comes past in second place, having taken Villarese. But we can't relax, for the Cunninghams are still going strong. And there's one healthy Ferrari to worry us in fifth place. And now number 19 is called in for the last time. And Peter Whitehead brings her in. Throughout the race, Peter and co-driver Ian Stewart have been our reserve, playing a patient, waiting game. And now they lie fourth, only ten minutes behind the first of the Cunninghams. And every second we can save in the pits gives them more chance of catching the Americans. With luck, it might still be a 1-2-3 victory. And when the big Cunningham comes in, a few laps later, our hopes rise.
But the shark, as the French have christened this car, is going as well as ever, and his pit team intend to keep it that way. There's no sign of panic, even when 19 passes, and the big Cunningham is soon back in the race again. So the great race draws to a close. The first seven cars have averaged more than 100 miles an hour. A Jaguar, a Jaguar, a Cunningham, a Jaguar, Marzotto's Ferrari, and the little Gordini. And Briggs Cunningham himself. Only a couple of dozen have stayed the course, and to finish is almost as much an honor as to have won. At four o'clock, Duncan Hamilton in number 18 Jaguar takes the checkered flag. Mesdames, Messieurs, le 24 heures du monde est terminé. The winning Jaguar has completed 304 laps. The Moss Walker Jaguar, five laps less. Then the Fitzwalter's Cunningham. Briggs Cunningham can feel justly proud his gallant private venture has ended so well. And all his supporters share his pleasure. Next comes Whitehead and Stewart in number 19. Then the last surviving Ferrari. And the Gordini. We meet the gentlemen of the press, and then we all go down to the ACO for the official ceremony. At last, the victors get their laurels and the traditional reward. The Jaguar for the greatest speed and distance, and the Panard team on handicap. And suddenly, the tension of weeks relaxes, and everyone talks to everyone in the great international democracy of motor racing. What a 24 hours it's been, with Jaguars winning for the first time in history at over 100 miles an hour. The great race has certainly come of age. As the evening draws in, the cars come down to the pits for the last time. When they came this way 24 hours ago, they were fresh and unproven, just numbered metal. And now each has made its name, and won the winning Jaguar, immortal fame. And at Silverstone, there was a great reception for Roque, Hamilton, and the car that broke all records at Le Mans. 